Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about what your ex is thinking during no contact. Okay, so if you've ever been wondering what your ex may be thinking during no contact, then hopefully these will give you a bit of a clue, okay? So the first thing that they'll be thinking of is they'll be wondering where you went because if you've been messaging them a lot since the breakup and if you've been trying to resolve things, you know, trying to correct things with them, and then all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden you have, you know, you, you've stopped doing that and you've gone into no contact and you've decided that you're not going to message anymore, right? They're going to wonder where you went. And often this is when times exes come back because once they've seen that you've backed off, they get a little bit scared, <laughs> okay? Especially if they still have feelings for you, right? They start fearing that they've lost you, that they're losing you and they reach out to you, Okay. So one of the things that they'll be thinking of is where did you go, okay? And like I said, often that can bring an ex back into your life, okay? So another thing that they'll be thinking of is how come they are moving on. So if they can see on your social media profiles that you've actually started to do new things, that you're um, thriving in life essentially, and that you're, um, you know, you're going out of your friends, or perhaps you're going to the gym, or perhaps you're doing this, perhaps you're doing that, you're doing all these different interesting things they will wonder like, oh, how come they're moving on? Because sometimes what can happen is, and this actually happens quite frequently actually, and that is when someone dumps someone, right? So they've, they've broken up the relationship. They're kind of half expecting, whether they're aware of it or not, for the person that they've dumped to chase them, to um, try and make things work, to try and fix the relationship, okay? So when they don't do that, right, and they do the opposite of that, they start moving on, it kind of hurts the dumper's ego a bit, okay, or maybe even a lot, because maybe they had this impression of themselves that they are hard to get over, that they're amazing, that, of, oh yeah, of course someone will chase me if I dump them, right, but if you don't do that, right, it's going to hurt their ego and it's going to confuse them, and it may even tip the scales and make you look more attractive than them. Because at the beginning, they were the one that were dumping you, right? Because I'm the one, because they were thinking, I'm the one that's the most desirable. Even if they weren't, if they're specifically thinking those exact things. But there comes like, there's the one that's kind of like being the, the person that's the dumper, essentially. And the one that's doing the dumping, right? They're the one that feels most powerful, most attractive, because they've stomped on your heart, Okay? So that means you're the unattractive one and I'm the attractive one, okay? That's essentially what's going on there, even if they're not specifically thinking those exact things, right? So once you're like, okay, fine, you accept it and you move on and you're not trying to resolve things, you're not trying to chase them down, right? That hurts their ego and it makes you look more attractive and the more desirable one, okay? And again, some, a dynamic shift like that, right, can make them more attracted to you and actually come back into your life. So they're going to be wondering, how come they're moving on? I thought that I was someone that was hard to get over. I thought that I was someone who was desirable. I thought that they would fight for me. I thought that they would try, but they're not. Okay. And it's going to confuse them <laughs> essentially. Okay. So another thing that they may be thinking is they may be wondering what you're up to. And this is sometimes when um, you might get a friend request back from an ex, right? Or something like that. Or you'll see that they're watching all of your stories on Instagram and things, right? But what you've got to remember is when your ex is doing that, that's not a good idea to... And that's not the time when you should start messaging them and thinking, oh yeah, they've broken no contact. No contact. They've reached out to me. They've, they've, um, they've watched my stories. They've re-added me again no that's not them breaking no contact no contact is broken when they've messaged you directly or they've phoned you up okay and it's a private conversation okay it's a private conversation between you and them and it's something that they have initiated that is the best time to respond back to your ex if you want to okay so yeah, so they may be thinking what you're up to, they may be stalking your social media profiles, you may be aware of it, you may not be aware of it, but if they're watching all of your stories, they may even be liking some of your stuff on social media, then that's a positive sign that they are thinking about you and they're wondering what you're up to. And that's what, one of the things that, that the exes think during their contact, they wonder what their exes are up to and they have a little sneaky stalk, okay? 
So another thing that your ex may be thinking during their contact is that maybe they are missing you. So maybe they are in fact missing you and they're hoping that things are gonna get resolved. And if they've got to the point where they're really missing you, then that's when it's likely that they're going to reach out to you and message you and ask how you're doing and perhaps um, try and rekindle things with you. But what you gotta realize as well is that an ex that comes back into your life, into your life may not actually say, oh yeah, I wanna get back with you. They'll do something indirect. They'll just talk to you, right? They'll just message you and things like that. Okay, but you gotta be acutely aware of how they're messaging you. Okay, very acutely aware <laughs> of how they're messaging you. Because if they're messaging you and they're saying, hey, how are you? And you're like, yeah, I'm good. And they're like, so I sent the divorce papers. Uh, can you sign them? Or can, can you pick up Timmy from football practice if you've got like a kid or something like that? Or is it right if I come and collect my TV? You know, things like that. If they're talking about things about finalizing the relationship or asking you to do errands because you've got uh, commitments together like children, a mortgage or something like that, or you've got a divorce to settle or something, then that's not a good sign. But if they're solely inquiring about you and they're just asking about you and they're asking about what you're doing, they're, they're wondering how you've been, what you're up to, how you are, and they're just talking about you and, they, and they're trying to prolong the conversation, keep the conversation going, that's more of a sign that they're interested in getting back with you, okay? So they might be missing you, okay? But what you've got to realize, and this is the last point that I want to get into, is it's a good idea to let go of the hypothetical, right? Because all of these situations are hypothetical situations, right? These are things that they could be thinking about, right? These, these are all things that they, they might, they may be thinking about or they may not be. Because it could be that your ex is totally over you and isn't thinking about you at all, okay? And if they do think about you, perhaps it's not really in the way that you would want it to, like they're missing you and wondering what you're up to and things like that, okay? It may be the case that they have moved on with their life and sometimes maybe they're a bit nosy and a bit curious about you and see what you're up to, but ultimately they're over you and they're still happy that the breakup happened, okay? So it's a good idea to let go of the hypothetical and trying to mind, do mind games and trying to think about what they're thinking and trying to like read into a crystal ball as to what's going on, okay? Because if you do those things, it will keep you stuck. Okay, and you want to be able to move on with your life because what's going to happen is your ex is either going to come back or they're not. But you have to prepare for the latter. You have to prepare for the fact that they may not be coming back. Okay, and if you're too fixated on what they're doing, what they're thinking, um, you know, when are they coming back? If you're looking for old photos of them, if you're listening to songs that remind you of them, um, and also if you're like going over old messages that you sent to each other, overanalyzing those things, that's going to keep you stuck. Okay, and thinking about hypothetical situations of what they're thinking is also going to keep you stuck too. So please do try to start moving on and focus on other things for a while so you can heal. And I've got plenty of videos on my channel where I discuss certain things about that. In fact, I usually sprinkle it in in most videos about exes and getting your ex back, how it's important to have goals for yourself and to feel good about yourself and to feel like you're moving your life forward and to basically improve every single facet of your life um, so that if your ex does come back you can be the best version of yourself or you attract someone even better and if you attract someone even better into your life you'll probably no longer care about your ex so thank you so much for watching if you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me then please go to www.christineloverish.com i shall talk to you again very soon Goodbye.